in our international service. 13 internationals. And I think a couple of local Canadians as well. One of them, she, she's just marvelous. She was just worshiping and dancing. She's a soul winner. She's a soul winner. I don't know anything about her except what God told me. Wanda, you want to come up here? She was dancing from the beginning, but she's a soul winner. I told her, I said, Wanda, you need to get baptized because God wants to give you authority to go and win other people. And she said, I'll do it. I'll do anything for Jesus. Oh, I want to be like her. I am clean. Well, somebody can come pray with her. One, can we have one lady just come and just sit with her? It's not going to phase me if she stays there all afternoon. I don't care. Thanks, Claudia. But I tell you what you need to fight and what I need to fight. And I'm going to let you sit in, the, in, in five seconds. We got to fight rejection because the fear of rejection will make you stop in your tracks. If you fear, you cannot dream wild. People who fear can't dream wildly. They can't come out of their box and do wild things for God. Do you want to be wild for Jesus? Or do you want to just be same old, same old? Every Sunday, come and hear a sermon and nothing happens. I want to be wild for God. Different. Different. I want the miraculous in my life. Every moment of every Every day that anyone I talk to will feel Jesus. Anyone I talk to won't see me but Jesus. Salt. That salt. It has the agent to change its environment. Let's lift up our hand one more time and then you may be seated. Father, I ask you to give us a passion. A passion and compassion for those that are in need. There are a bunch of people here that were baptized last night. I'm not going to call all of them out, but every one of them, they need you to surround them with your love, the love of Christ. Go for it, Wanda. You can, you can pray in the, in the Holy Ghost. Wanda got filled with the Holy Ghost last night, folks. You may be seated. Matthew chapter 14 verses 24 to 32. Matthew 14, 24 to 32. I didn't even tell the media about the scripture. I'm sorry. But you got a cool media, so they may pull it up. You know the story about the boat. It was tossed about by waves. The wind was boisterous. Scripture says the wind was contrary. There it is. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. The boat was just, you know, tossed about like a hurricane in the waters. And it was dangerous. Lives could have been lost. But right in the middle of the storm, they see Jesus walking on the water. And the disciples gasp and say, oh, it's a ghost. Don't ever be in a place where you forgot what Jesus feels like. If Jesus walks towards you on the water and he's in the middle of a miracle, he's coming to you in a trial, it's sometimes easy for us to be so lost in the storm that we don't recognize Jesus when we see him. We think he's a ghost. The disciples were with him for so many days and they didn't recognize that it was Jesus. It's a ghost, they cried out of fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, if I was, if I was Jesus, that, that's why I'm not Jesus, you see. Because if I was Jesus, I'd say, do I look like a ghost to you? I mean, we went fishing together. I did miracles in the midst of you. I healed so many people. I did so many things. And, and, and all you can think of when you see me is that I'm a ghost. Have you forgotten me so soon? But he didn't. Jesus, the gentleman. He spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not 
be afraid. You see, Jesus waged a war against fear. He, 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 if he battled, not in himself, but if he battled anything at all in other people who he wanted to release and empower to do his work, it was fear. And then Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be, Peter didn't even recognize his words. If it, this is really you, command me to come to you on the water. And so he said, come. And when Peter had come out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And then he saw that the wind was violent, boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? I can't afford to live in doubt anymore. You know, I feared a lot. In my early years in ministry, I just feared one great thing. If I shared Jesus with somebody and if they didn't like it and they rejected me, I won't be able to, I don't think I'll be able to handle that. I'll take it personal. Or if I lose something because of me just going out on a limb. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got out of the boat, the wind, they, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased the wind stopped you see we have a peacemaker in our midst we have someone that can look at the wind and say peace be still so when the wind gets boisterous that's when you gaze undoubtingly into the face of Jesus Christ it's not easy talk is cheap but if you keep doing it at some point down your journey you'll get it The disciples, scripture says, were in the middle of the stormy sea, tossed by the waves, tossed. Does it sound like your life? Sometimes sounds like my life. Tossed by a bad economy, tossed by divorce, tossed by people in your life that wouldn't give you a moment's peace, tossed by bad finances, loss of a job, loss of health, loss of your youth. The disciples fought, fought the storm for nine cold hours and suddenly they spot someone walking towards them on the water. They were terrified. Like I said earlier, they were terrified thinking it must be a ghost. You know why? Because they didn't expect Jesus in the storm. That's why they thought he was a ghost. But we don't expect Jesus in the storm. Maybe some of you are more spiritual than me do. But when I'm in the middle of a trial, the la if my car breaks down, I call AA and then pray. <laughs> I'm learning to pray first and then call AA so that they will be there on time and not make me wait two hours on the road. That's how we are. Our default, our default reaction is to reach out to a worldly solution to a worldly problem. Your car breaks down, you call the auto mechanic. You've, you're sick, you call the doctor, you call 911 or the, or the emergency care or whatever. You need help, you call the psychologist, counselor, or pastor. Many of us we don't really expect Jesus to come in a storm we expect Jesus to come maybe sliding down a rainbow with a flock of doves or bluebirds in the Cinderella whatever come flow you don't do all that okay I'm sorry <laughs> I was saved from the world I haven't forgotten Cinderella we expect Jesus to walk around with a flock of, flock of doves flying around him. We never expect to see him in a bad economy or in a horrible lawsuit. We don't expect Jesus in the hospital room when cancer is announced. Addiction, don't expect to see him there. We don't expect to see him in a foreclosure or war. We are conditioned to think that bad circumstances is for us alone to fight alone. We've been conditioned that way, maybe because in the past you have fought some things alone. But if you're still alive and you're here, God at some point had fought with you. If you're still alive and you're here this morning, at some point God rescued you even if you did not realize it. We are peppered with bad news. How many here you receive emails you wish that whoever hacked into your... I get all kinds of emails and it's very seldom from friends. 
I wish you would write me an email because at least you know me and you'd say, hi, Vani, how you doing? Everything okay? By the way, live feed can go back on. I, sorry, I didn't. I forgot to say that. <laughs> We're peppered with bad news. I get emails all the time. I don't know why people want to tell me about global warming. I live in Louisiana. I know about global warming. It's my backyard. I get, I get emails, Pastor Jack, about asteroid attacks. What am I supposed to do? Lie in bed waiting for it to hit? I don't know. And they don't know me. This is mass email sent to nobody knows who. I don't know who's sending it to me, but it's mass email. You know why? Because the enemy wants us to become the most frightened generation that ever lived. Anxiety levels are higher than at any generation in our lives. We go through anxiety. Fear is the greatest thing. Anxiety is the biggest thing that they hit. And I'm not just talking about the United States. Everywhere. Even in Asia. I get emails about the Zika virus. I'm sorry. It's just too pretty a name for a virus. Sounds like somebody I went to school with. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm just <laughs> no, seriously. I'm pretty sure she's on my contact list, but. <laughs> if I've offended anybody, just forget that corny joke. I get emails on wars and ISIS and earth. I know they exist. I know that it's horrible in the world out there. I know sometimes you just want to cover yourself with a blanket, never get up because you go out there and, you, and, and the media is full of all this bad news. Does it ever stop? The bad news is taking its toll, people. And now we try and we bring that spirit of fear into the, into the church. It's, it's taking its toll. And we are fearful. Fearful to reach people. Fearful to love somebody. Because love is dangerous. Love is very risky, don't you think? Because what if they don't love you back, right? I've been in situations where I've loved, they didn't love me back. I've been in situations, so have you. Love is risky. We are the most worried culture that has ever lived. And fear at its center is a perceived loss of control. Fear blocks light, you see. You know what the enemy told me when I was talking to my, to my sweet friend Sumaya? You know what the enemy told me? She was sweet. She was wanting God from the get-go. But that night the enemy told me, you better be careful. Because, you know, the, 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 the particular situation, the particular circumstance, the particular culture... They'll come after you and they come after the church. I had to fight that spirit that was trying to get me to stop the light from going out. Was trying to get me to stop salt and light. I almost didn't. I almost wanted to say, you know, maybe we should stop while the going is good. Because I don't want to be any kind of way. I'm not saying don't be wise. Because he that winneth the soul is wise. But... The enemy was trying to silence me completely and cut me off from her. Cut me off from last night. I fought it. And then Jesus said, you cannot shine, Vani, when you fear. Because we become like abandoned barns. Have you ever seen an abandoned barn? Nothing is ever stored there. It's got holes on the roof. Birds build nests there. On a strong wind it tilts and it's rickety. You know, where well, humanity used to live and thrive. I don't want to be someone where the church says, well, she used to be like this. She used to reach out. She used to be on fire. She used to be passionate. I don't want to be an abandoned barn. I want to be a barn full of food and nourishment for every bird and field and fowl of the air and beast of the field to come and shelter, to shelter with me. The safety lover cannot do anything great for God. What am I telling you today, CCC? I know there are people here that need the Holy Ghost and they're going to receive it. If they're hungry, God will fill them. God will fill you. But I'm speaking to the body of Christ. I'm asking you today to pull down every stronghold of fear. Because this city, there is a window open. I don't know for how long. I pray to God it's for a couple of years. But there is a window open right now. 
And we're going to come against every lie of the devil to get with our neighbors, our community, our markets, our stores, and we're going to bring them in. Is that okay? If you believe that with me, will you clap and shout with great faith in your heart? Oh, the, the, the safety lover. You know what happens to those who fear? We begin to worship the God of safety. I'm not talking about big G, small G. The God of safety. You know, the God of safety will lie to you. It's Satan, really. Fearful folks are afraid to give, give of their time, resources, strength. They're so scared they won't have enough to live on if they give to God. Fearful folks cannot dream wildly. That's why Jesus waged a war against fear. The fearful cannot love deeply. Love is risky. But I want to ask you something, CCC. Are we willing to embrace the critical principle of seeing the unseen? First thing we need to do to overcome fear is to ignore what faithless people around you will say. I'm not telling you to cut ties with friends and family. But I have come to a place in my life back in the States. In, I, I, I've, I used to have a lot of friends. Now I don't have a lot of friends. No, I do. I have some good friends. But I have had to make a conscious choice to have boundaries around my ear and to stuff my ear with cotton wool when I'm surrounded by anyone that will say you cannot do it. It's not going to happen. God will not come through. The problem is too big. Stuff your ears with cotton wool and smile at them and say I love you too. I can't hear anything you're saying. Your lips are moving but I don't get it. But I love you. Just smile and wave. <laughs> Block them out. I'm doing that. I'm not being mean. I'm not being unkind. I hope I'm not. I'm trying to be loving. But I need faithful people. I need people like last night, the team, the altar work team, and people like Pastor Jack. Some of you that opened your homes for prayer and the rest of you that will come to prayer meeting while we're having service here. You are here praying, pulling down strongholds. I need people like you around me to keep me going, to remind me that I'm salt and light. I don't want faithless people around me. I used to do that, you know, hang on the phone for 45 minutes while they trash the pastor, trash the church, trash pastor's wife, trash everything, trash. Uh, everybody's wrong. Government is wrong. People are wrong. Cops are wrong. My family's wrong. My great grandmother is crazy. My husband is mean. My mother in law needs to just leave. My children are no good. I've had it with that. Because they, they drain the juice that I have. They drain me from all the faith that I have. God is bad. Pastor is bad. Everybody is bad. So now I give them five minutes. I'll say hello. Yes, I'm, I, I called you again, Sister Marshall, to talk to you about this problem. I said, you remember you called me yesterday, right? <laughs> have, you done, have you done what I told you yesterday? You know, like to get with somebody and pray and get full of faith and just go to God and maybe read a few scriptures to increase your faith. Have you done what I told you? Yes, no. Okay, well you got four minutes and 57 seconds. There are some that will take what you say to them and they'll run with it and change because they want to change or they'll at least try to change. There are some that just want your attention. Choose who you want around you. Choose. I'm not telling you to be unkind to anybody. But don't get drained out by those that don't get it yet. God will get them ready and you can go to them when they're ready. But there are those that are ready now. They are ready now. They are next door to you, living across from you in your apartment block. Go to them. But the others, that's what I do. I turn them off. Living for Jesus sometimes, as I said, means ignoring the ones who say, don't get out of this boat. I would have been like that with Peter though, Pastor Jack. If Peter wanted to get out of the boat, Jesus told Peter, what? Come. Yeah, it's me. Come on, Peter. And Peter, wow, you mean I'm going to defy gravity? I'm going to defy gravity and walk on this water? How cool is that? If I was in the boat, good thing I was not in the boat because I have my faithless days. Oh yeah, I'm not like I'm on something. I got days when I'm thinking, my God, God must be dead. 
I believed a lie. It's not true. It probably lasts about a few hours and then the Lord just slaps me in the head and then I wake up. Oh, thank you, God. Needed that. <laughs> you know. But if I was in the boat, I'd have told Peter, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, Jesus is calling me. Peter, Jesus is God. He can walk on the water. You're going to drown. <laughs> Shut up and sit down. Okay? No need to be hero. You're not Iron Man. Sorry. Another one. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, just calm down, chill. Probably the other disciples were thinking, Peter's crazy. I mean, it's a storm. Don't forget, the water was not placid when he got out of the boat. He got out when everything was rolling. It takes a lot of faith when, to get out on a limb and follow after Jesus when everything is going to pot. Everything is stormy. Everything looks dark, hopeless. So you have to ignore the ones who say don't get out of the boat. You got to turn a deaf ear towards those who say that you're not smart enough. You're not fast enough. You're not rich enough. You're not tall enough. You're not big enough. CCC, you've got a God who is smart enough, who's fast enough, who's rich enough, who's tall enough, who's big enough, who's strong enough. If you believe that, why don't you just shout one more time? Yeah, you can get up, get up and shout if you believe that you have a God that is willing to fight for you, who's big enough, great enough, strong enough, that if you follow him, you will defy gravity. You will defy what others see with your eyes. You can walk on water. I don't know whether I shared this with you. I know that Pastor Wilson has been here and talked to you about the UN. Have I shared the story of how? No. About a year and a half ago, I received an email and the email said, Dear Mrs. Marshall, we would like you to come to the United Nations and speak for an hour. Have you ever got weird emails like that? You think that's April Fool and it's not even April. The person who sent me the email is a bigger fool. And so I read the email and I thought, oh my, God, one of those Zika virus emails. You know, I'm thinking I'm not even going to, I didn't delete it for some reason, but I didn't respond to it. I just thought it was a joke. One week later, same email, second email was written to me. Said, Mrs. Marshall, we are trying to make sure that that this is your correct email address. We're trying to contact you. Would you please call us at the number below? Uh, we want you to come to the United Nations. This is UN in, in New York. We want you to come to the United Nations to speak for one hour. <laughs> you know, it's like get out of the boat moment. And I'm thinking, I'm going to drown. If I get out of this boat, I'll probably get deported. No, not really. You can't deport me. <laughs> they have to catch me first. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> they don't deport citizens. Not the last time I checked. <laughs> you never know. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> better hold my tongue there. This is on live. <laughs> so anyway, I called that number. I scrolled down the email and there was, a, there was a phone number and the name of the supposedly UN senior advisor to the general secretary. Okay. Nothing may come of it. At least I can brag that I talked to the senior advisor of the UN secretary <laughs> over the phone. I called that number and she picked it up very quickly and she said, Mrs. I said, this is Mrs. Marshall. And she said, Mrs. Marshall, we've been trying to contact you. Always gave up hope. I'm like, so is this the UN? She must have thought that I'm really, you know, drugged up or something. You know, you know just half unconscious. She, yes, this is the U United Nations. And I said, you want me to come there? Yes, to speak. We want you to come and just talk for about an hour to our delegates, other secretaries, uh, senior advisors, and maybe a few ambassadors. I'm like, what do I talk to them for one hour about? See, I forgot. I'm Christian. There's a lot to talk about. 
There's a lot to talk about if you're a believer, but for one minute there, I thought, no way. What am I to talk about? I don't do that much important business to talk for about an hour about it. <laughs> she said, oh no, I mean, uh, one of us checked you out on the YouTube. And I'm like, why? What was I doing? <laughs> you don't know these days. YouTube is crazy. Man. I, mean, I mean, it was a service. I was speaking and it was my testimony. And she said, we checked you out on YouTube and you have this testimony of how God, it, and I'm like, God? She said, yes, she must have thought at that time I was, you know, uh, you know just strange. I said, you, you know I'm a Christian. You know, that's what we do, right? We're almost apologetic that we're people of faith. You know, we go to, we go to a restaurant, we pray like this. <laughs> Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this food. And fear. Fear that we're going to be thought of as just crazy people. Right, Sister Woodward? And so I just, I just said, okay, long story short, they flew me. They flew me. That was easy to go. <laughs> okay, I don't have to buy the ticket. Oh, I'm coming. <laughs> Cheapskate. <laughs> so I went. I arrived at LaGuardia, New York, uh, the airport. And I took my little, I just took a hand carry. I thought, hey, two days worth of clothes is enough. They probably throw me back anyway. So, <laughs> and so I took a hand carry, hand luggage with just two or three uh, clothes, clothing items. And I was walking out and there was tall man, tall man, jet black hair, jet black eyes, black long coat, just, just tall. <laughs> Most people are to me <laughs> so Maya understands that's okay we small people are kind of powerful and so I I stood there and I looked up at him and he had a card a, a, a cardboard holding up my name on it so I said that's me <laughs> and she's like he's like you are Vani Marshall I was a Christian. I couldn't lie. <laughs> yes. I have come to take you to the United Nations. We will go in my car. I was like, okay. <laughs> I get out there. It's a long black limousine car. So it's legit. Long black car. Black car, black hair, black eyes, black coat. He opened the back door. He said, get in. I said, I am being kidnapped by a Russian spy. <laughs> and my husband doesn't know how to load the dishwasher. <laughs> it was horrible. So I went in, there was a glass window between him he was driving the car and there was this glass thing that he pressed the button and it went up and I was alone at the back with my hand carry and he went on and on I'd forgotten that Manhattan is you know it's a long ways to go to the UN from the airport I forgot I've never been to the UN and so he kept driving sister Woodward and I kept you know getting nervous and then finally I knocked on the glass door he looked at me I said so we're going to the UN? <laughs> He's like, yes. He's thinking in his mind, why do these people invite people like you? <laughs> Standards have dropped. Finally, we arrive at the UN. He gets out. I get out and he said, okay, we are here. I go. All right, take care. Thank you for not killing me. Because I had this vision, you know, I'm in a boat, handcuffed. <laughs> this is all the way somewhere to Europe. No, not really, but. And I arrived and then this, this person that called me, that emailed me in the beginning, whose name I cannot reveal because she still works there. She comes up to me. She said, Mrs. Marshall? I said, yes. Are you so-and-so? She said, yes. Can you be ready in 30 minutes? You're speaking. What? Okay. I'm out of the boat. 
Waters are everywhere. There's a storm. I don't see Jesus nowhere. Not even a ghost. <laughs> a ghost would have been nice. And so I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then I go up to the room, to the hotel room. The, it's the hotel right opposite the UN. It's, it's actually called a UN hotel. I didn't even know they had a hotel. So I went up, put my bag, freshen up, comb my hair, run down back, follow her just across the street. And we went to what is called the UN chapel. The UN had a chapel of many religions. Can uh, It's an ecumenical chapel. Many religions can, can worship there and all of that. Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Christianity. And so we went there and one by one, the place was filled and there were about 70 people there. 70 senior advisors, some of them were ambassadors, directors, and, um, and delegates, UN delegates were all there, about 70 people. The sound man came to me. They were not as friendly as any of them. The sound man came to me, gave me a mic, and went, you're on. <laughs> Thank you. No music, nothing. There was nothing. No mutant. There was no atmosphere. All the delegates were sitting in front of me looking at me like this. I looked at back. <laughs> so I just introduced myself. It was fear gripped my heart, Sister Woodward. I thought that, you know, I, I, the safest thing to talk about was me. I know me. So I talked about who I was and all the work that I did and, you know, and all of that. And all this while, probably God was trying to get my attention. You know, you can talk about me. That's why you're here. But I ignored him. And uh, I, I talked about the community work that I do, that I'm a counselor. I'm a, you know, that all of this. And all of a sudden, right in the middle, 10 minutes after I started talking, God speaks to me and says, tell them I can fill them. Fill them with what? What are you talking about? Just get away from me. <laughs> so I continued and, and, and talking about me, all the stuff that I do. They, no wonder they look bored. And again, God, second chance, this time more insistent, compelling. Sister Lehman, that's what and God told me. Tell them I want to fill them. I said, you tell me. <laughs> Knock yourself out. No, I didn't. I was thinking it. I didn't do that. But I thought it. So I looked at them and I stopped and I said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about what gives me peace and confidence and, and whatever I do, what energizes me to do it. And I started talking to them about the spirit of God. I said, some of you, you, you are over. Your senior advisors, the secretary general, at that time it was Ban Ki-moon, was the secretary general of the United Nations. Now it's Guterres. But, and he, I said, you are senior advisors to, uh, and, and you are over different things. You are over the environment, peace treaties, disarmament, children's education, children's welfare, refugees, settlements, resettlement. You're over all of these various departments. I can tell you, you cannot make decisions that will benefit you without the spirit of God guiding you and filling you. All of a sudden, I saw some of the delegates move forward in their chair and look at me more intently. You know, like you would a bug in a microscope. <laughs> and I said... I said, that is true. If you were filled with the Holy Spirit, if you, were, if you receive this power from God, there is nothing that can stop you. You will be impassionate. You will be bold. You will, you will be able to do things even far wider with its impact. You are making decisions that impact the whole world. You cannot afford to do it without God. And then God came after me again. He said, good. Now tell them to lift up their hands. <laughs> I said, those of you who would like to receive the baptism of his spirit, lift up your hands. And all 70 pairs of hands went up. In the UN. The body that governs the nations of this world. They went up. All of a sudden, a new boldness overtook me. I don't know where the boldness was 30 minutes ago because I was cowardly. But all of a sudden, I thought, man, that looks like church. So I'm on home turf. 
this is home ground here. Now we can play ball. Because <laughs> it doesn't look like UN now. Not with everybody like that. Are you kidding me? It looks like a Pentecostal outfit. <laughs> I know you're laughing, but I, I know you thought that secretly when you first came here. And so I thought, okay, those of you who had your hands high up, would you stand and come forward? Because my friends, there were some of the people in the local church in New York, some of them joined us as well, forgot to say, and they were there. And I said, my friends would pray for you, pray with you, for you to receive God's spirit. I tell you what, one of the first people to come running was a Muslim lady from Somalia. She had her hijab. She came running towards me and she lifted her hands and she said, I'm Muslim. I said, Jesus loves you. That's the only answer we need. Jesus loves you. And, and she said, will I be able, as you give your heart to God, you will be able to. Right, Samaya? And she lifted up her hand. And God filled her. She was the first one to receive the Holy Ghost that afternoon. By the end of that by the end of that visit, by the end of that service, we had 14 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the UN. No fear. Fear destroys. Fear causes you. Come on, if you believe it. Do you want that fear to go? Come on, Wanda. I want that stronghold of fear to be broken today today all you need to do all you need to do is position yourself for deliverance for victory stop treating your fear with angry outbursts or even medic I'm not against medication I'm a counselor but stop treating fear with just if you think the answer is at the bottom of a bottle or vice-like control. CCC, this morning, I'm asking you to position yourself to come out on top. By stop, stop excluding God from the solution. Repeated bouts with insecurity that petrify and paralyze you. Because hysteria is not from God. It's not from God. I was hysterical the first 30 minutes I was there in my mind. I wasn't showing it, but inside I was quaking with fear until God had to get a hold of me and say, preach the gospel. The word is powerful all by itself. It doesn't need your personality or temperament or even excitement. If your personality is soft and quiet, use the word. The word has enough temperament and personality and life to get it done. The word will get it done. If your personality is not gregarious, you're not vivacious, you're quiet, the word will work for you. If you're vivacious, you're passionate, you talk, you like to, you're, you're sanguine, the word will work for you. The word will work anytime, anywhere, any place. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. I want you to stand. Fear. Fear may fill your world. It doesn't have to fill your heart. Don't you see God's diplomas? God has hung his diplomas all over. Look at the night sky. Star sequined. Look at the horizons and the sunsets. Look at every rainbow. He has recorded his accomplishments in scripture. We're not talking about 6,000 flight miles here. God's resume includes opening Red Seas and killing Goliath. Shutting lions' mouths and raising dead people back to life. That's his resume. Nobody needs my resume. My resume hasn't done a thing. May have got me a job or two in the past. But it hasn't raised the dead, healed the blind, or cured the sick. But Jesus has a resume. If you cannot believe anything, believe his CV. Stop limiting your possibilities. Stop listening only for the audible. I don't mean this mean, but limit your time with people that will trash your faith and trash God and trash his accomplishments and get around people that will praise God 
honor God and brag on Jesus. Let me tell you something else. Jesus is not going to let the noise distract you. And we're surrounded by noise, Pastor Jack. Am I right? We're surrounded by noise, Sister Woodward. You know, family members, friends, boyfriends, ex-husbands, children, school, media, radio, news, bad news. We're surrounded by just noise. But God, if you put your faith in him this morning, he's not going to let the noise distract you. For that, you need to be full of the Holy Ghost. So when, he, when the enemy pushes noise at you, you push back. When the enemy says you cannot reach a person of a different faith, you will be persecuted. I push back. Someone that Sister Woodward reached out in a, in a supermarket. We called her the other day and she wants to meet us on Monday. There's a window opened. She, she, Sister Woodward just met her, connected with her, and that lady wants to meet us on Monday. Let me tell you what, Eric's pool still has water in it, I think. God has thrown life jackets to every generation. You're not an exception. He's throwing you a life jacket now. If you feel or you know someone who struggles with fear and you want or you don't struggle with fear but you want anointing. You want a boldness like never before. I want you to be the first one to run out. Come on. I'm done. Run out. Don't walk out. Run out. Wanda got the Holy Ghost last night. She wants more. She wants more. Run out. Louis. Ah, look at that. Little Louie. He's right here. <laughs> He's never met Jesus before. But he, Jesus knows him. He has a mother who's excited. Tamaya, Louie is going to get exactly what you receive. Do you believe that? Yeah. He said, I feel like a model right now. All right. If you've never received the baptism of God's spirit and you want that, or you've received it but you want more, I'd like you to make your way up in front. Don't be afraid. If you're visiting here for the first time, that's okay. You only get to be a visitor today. Next Sunday, your family. Come on, there's more space. Come right up in front. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for coming up in front. <laughs> Man, I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss all of you when I leave on Tuesday. I, I texted your pastor this morning and said, I'm so tempted to stay another week. He said, we don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I think over there they'll have a problem with me. <laughs> Can we have the music? And singing. The very first song that they did. Dancing generation. I want us to lift up our hands right now. You know why I would like us to worship? Because in the midst of worship, God moves. God is enthroned in the praises of his people. I want God's presence here. God's presence has been here from, from the get-go, from the start to finish. Can we have the altar workers, whether you're on my team, CCC altar workers, Pastor Jack and your team, whoever Pastor Jack and Pastor Woodward have selected as altar workers. I want you all to get here right in front. There are visitors, there are people here that need the, that want the Holy Ghost. Let's get with them one on one, stand in front of them. We are going to pray that they receive power. Are you ready? Okay, lift up your hands. We're going to pray together first. Okay? We're going to pray together first. Every hand lifted up. Every eye closed. Lift your, lift your head up to the heavens. Your hands up to the heavens. Pray with me, Father. Pray with me, Father. In the name of Jesus. Forgive me.
for every fear, every anxiety, every worry, every fear of rejection, every fear of failure. I am your child. You are my God. Nothing will ever stop me from accomplishing your will on earth. Lord, you are going to baptize me afresh again today. Fill me with your fire. Fill me with your passion. Fill me with your kindness and love. Because there's a world out there in Fredericton to reach. Right now, ask him, Jesus, I want your baptism. Say, Jesus, I need your anointing right now all over the house if you're not in front you can pray if you're way back there I don't care pray all over the house he is your God you are his child you are his daughter his sons mercy 